This video will show you how to render the same space in Illustrator using flat vector graphics and then Photoshop using Enscape. And by the end of the video, you will be informed on both the advantages and disadvantages of both softwares and how you can incorporate both in your architectural workflow. I've exported my SketchUp model as a PDF and then added that into Illustrator. It's so easy to just delete lines and shapes and it's all so high quality. And I'm going to add a couple from another file that I've saved so many people on by copying and pasting it onto my file. One of the best advantages in Illustrator is that you can change colors of shapes and lines so easily. So I can delete the surfaces where the windows were and I can change the colors of the wall. If I go into select and I select the same fill color I can also select multiple at the same time and now I'm just going to add a stroke for now a very light stroke just so that I can select these shapes using the select same fill color and I'm going to group it so that if I need to do any arrangements or editing this will be easy to move around but in these illustrations, usually there's no stroke, so I'm just going to remove the stroke. And now I can edit within the group of this and then start color in the shapes to make them more 3D and enhance the legibility of the shapes. So it's really easy to just select one shape and then I'm gonna change the brown into a darker brown and then then go into select all of these shapes by pressing I, I can sample in the darker shade and that will easily change for me. And I'm also going to make the glass panel just a little bit more blue just to give it a bit more interest as well. It's all about the little details that you can do in your image to make it really stand out. And then again, trying to enhance the 3D of this diagram by making some shapes a bit darker where the shadow would be. Online you can find so many of these vector furniture that are isometric and it's so easy to just add because it's isometric so all of the angles are the same so you can place it with confidence that it is in perspective but with Photoshop it's a bit harder to find furniture that is cut out to add it into your diagram and to make sure that the perspective fits and you don't even need to use clip and mask you can just arrange things to be in front of other shapes so so to hide things i just move them to the front so it hit them so no need for clipping masks and as you can see you can find so many vectors and then you can change the colors all i have to do is reflect them if they're in the wrong orientation and if there's something or a color that I don't like in any of these vectors, I can then change the color and edit it to suit my style. And that is almost impossible to do in Photoshop to be really this detail and specific unless you go into adjustments and hues and saturation. And even then you won't be able to get the exact color that you want. And with moving things and making them a bit bigger, because if you move things, it will alter the perspective. So it's really easy to just sketch things and make it longer or fit the space better. For quick illustrations, they're so easy to just drag and drop and add it to your renders. So... Now I'm just going to add an outline to give the diagram a bit of hierarchy. And then again, changing the colors of the walls just to add that detail. Then I'm going to change the colors of the furniture to match together so that it's one cohesive color palette. Now. I've seen so many diagrams and things like this on Pinterest, completely black and white, and I think those look good too, so maybe consider doing that. You can stop right here or you can add this into Photoshop just to add a bit of texture into the shapes because they are quite flat now. So all you have to do is select everything and paste that into Photoshop as a smart object. 
and if you zoom in you can see all of the lines are so clean and so tidy it's quite hard to do or achieve this effect alone in photoshop so i'm just going to use the color range to select some of the areas and add a bit of texture I selected the curtains as well, but let's say our curtains are concrete a little bit, so that's fine. And I'm also going to add a pattern to my floor just to give it a bit of detail. And I'm so happy with this texture because it kind of works. So I like it. And I'm also going to export the shadows from SketchUp. And to do that, you're going to go into the hidden line style. And if you go into edit, you can hide the edges and the profiles. And you can then export that as a JPEG and you'll get your shadows. And then you can add that into your Photoshop file. And add that to your diagram now most of these images are quite flat and don't have shadow but i feel like once you do add shadow it looks a bit more architectural so you can then change that into multiply and that will fit it right for you and you can add a clipping mask to delete some areas if you don't want it to affect the area And as you can see, because we added the shadow later, it goes on top of the sofa. But one of the best, best advantages of using Illustrator is if you click on this where it's a smart object. So if you click on that little icon, it will open a new Illustrator file completely different from the original. And then I can just select the objects that I don't want and I'm going to cut them and save. So once I go back into Photoshop, as you can see, it's not there. And then I can select that space again and then just fix my clipping mask. I'm going to paste those shapes again as a smart object and then I can just add them right there and they will be in layers. So now ideally you would export layers from Illustrator but I just wanted a quick solution so I didn't do that. So now just to add a bit of texture, I'm just going to stamp everything, pressing Control, Shift, Alt and E and I'm going into Camera Raw Filter and just adjusting the colors a little bit because I like my diagrams really bright. And then I'm going into FX to add a bit of grain because since everything is really flat, this will help add texture as well. So you can skip adding patterns and just do this if you wanted to, but the patterns really help as well. And this is the final diagram. I think it's nice. It looks very different. It's definitely one of those images that you see on Instagram and Pinterest. And I'm really happy with it. So now let's move into Photoshop and Enscape. Now it is so easy to just render things. Oh my god. So quicker than V-Ray. Those materials are V-Ray materials. But it also renders in Enscape. So I was pretty pleased with that. And as you can see it's really easy to just adjust the settings. And get a nice bright image. If you go into extensions, landscape, and then take a screenshot, that will render the space for you. And you can see how quick it is to actually render it on a really high quality settings. So I don't think it's as realistic as V-Ray, but it is definitely a really good close match, especially for beginners in renderings like me. And it also renders all of these layers that you can add, which will help you select areas. So I added this plane at the bottom of the diagram just to allow landscape to add the shadow but I don't want to add that so I'm gonna select it and then add a clipping mask and then I can just select the shadow and put it back in the clipping mask by painting over it with white So you don't really have to do that much into this diagram. I'm just going into camera raw filter and just adjusting a few of the settings and you can add the grain if you wanted to.
and I'm also going to add that stroke on the outline of the diagram to give it hierarchy. added some light it was just for fun basically and to say i did something in photoshop because you could have left it exactly as it is you could also add some lamps plants or anything like that but i just really liked it as it is and i'm also going to add this guy in this tube because it is an executive suite so i feel like it fits the style and you can also add a motion blur to these people because i think it works really well in this type of diagrams but I didn't want to add it to him because he was just standard. One way to find if your objects fit your renders perfectly is to add black and white adjustment layer. And as you can see, that person is really, really dark. Once you turn it into black and white, it's really easy for you to not get distracted by colors and just see the values. So that person would have to have the same value of, let's say, the curtains or the sofa because it's where he is standing. So I'll be adding a levels layer mask and then just adjusting that to get him lighter. And I'm going to leave him a bit darker because he is wearing a dark suit but as you can see it fits so much better into the image and you can also add lamps and things like that you can then merge everything and also use camera or filter if you wanted to at the end but i did add a sharpen filter to bring out some details and make the diagram pop and this is the final image. I'm really happy with it. So these are the two images side by side. So as you can see, they are completely different styles. The one in Enscape and Photoshop, you can get more creative and add a lot of detail into the furniture. However, creating Illustrator diagrams, it's easier, it's quicker. You can change the colors really easily. Your laptop won't crash a thousand times. So in the end of this video, I hope that you found both the advantages and disadvantages of both software so that you can make an informed decision on which software you want to use in your workflow. Doesn't mean that you have to use only Illustrator or Photoshop. I think it's best to use both as I've shown in my previous videos. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful. So let me know if and how you're going to incorporate Illustrator in your architectural workflow in the comments down below. And don't forget that now you can book a call with me on Superpeer if you have any questions or you would like any feedback or help with your project. You can also find additional services on my Fiverr page which will all be linked in the description box and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you have not already and I would really appreciate it if you could share the video to someone who does not use Illustrator and you think they should. I'm Risha Shiruru and I will see you next time.